and we're hearing that nobody's happy at this point, uh, Senator. Democrats in the House, certain Republicans in the Senate, nobody likes the $1.8 trillion, which is not that far from $2.3, $2.4. It, it seems like there's more than meets the eye going on here from, from both sides and not wanting to move ahead with this. Well, Joy, that's a good, uh, I think, assessment. Um, nobody's happy. Sometimes when nobody's happy, that's the best deal you can get. Um, because not, you know, when all or nothing is your negotiating position at the beginning, it's one thing. But when your last negotiating position is all or nothing, you generally end up with nothing. And that's true in, in pretty much every kind of negotiation, but certainly true in Washington, D.C. So you're right, $1.8 trillion isn't that far from $2.3 trillion, but it's also not far from $1.2 trillion. Republicans uh, scoff at the price tag, understandably. We've driven up an awful lot of debt. Uh, listen to your previous segment. I have to say, Joe, I agree more with you than your than your guest. Uh, the, the idea <laughs> of uh, increased taxes and regulations frightens the heck out of me, and, and I think we need to avoid that, but we also need to avoid driving up this debt any further unnecessarily. And that's why a more targeted approach, as Republicans have proposed, I think is the better way to go. There are a lot of things we can agree on. Let's focus on those things, like airline um, support, like small business support. How about including restaurants and the travel industry in the next round? Who They were largely left out of the last round. And uh, we need to build a bridge to the other side of this, uh, to this economic slump. So that's what Republicans would want, but that's different than what uh, the Democrats would want. Do you think there's a, a common ground on, on an airline bill or something small, Senator? In, yeah, I, I think there's a common ground. The question is whether um, it's it's tenable for, for one side or the other to accept the fact that the other side might win something. Um, one of the things that I've, I have always found frustrating in Washington is when people oppose something for what's not in it. That's why I think we should find that common ground you're talking about, whether it's an extension, an expansion of PPP, some help for airline industry, maybe even an extension of unemployment and insurance benefits at a more modest number than what Speaker Pelosi is providing. But we shouldn't let nothing be the conclusion just because you didn't get everything. The other problem, Joe, is there's a, there is a lot of you know, monkey business, if you will, going on on the policy side. Things like pro prohibiting states from requiring um, identification to get a ballot, for example, or allowing ballot harvesting nationwide, or stimulus checks for for illegal immigrants. Those things are those things are going to make it impossible for us to get to a deal. Let's focus on the things that we know the vast majority of people want. And we might not get 10 or 20 Republicans, and we might lose 10 Democrats, but. We got to find the big, broad middle and, and come to a conclusion that I, I think the country's crying out for. I think that's what Cudlow was saying that if if the Dems will compromise, that you'd get enough Republicans at that point, and it, that that wouldn't be the stumbling block. What do you really think the chances are that that's going to happen? In that you talk about somebody getting a win, and there, there's a whole group of you know we have a lot of when we do have Republicans on, they all say that that uh, Speaker Pelosi is loath to to agree to anything prior to the election. Yeah, I think that's probably right. I think all or nothing's easy if you're willing to settle for nothing. I think in her case she probably prefers nothing because the political calculation is Democrats benefit from nothing. Then they can blame Donald Trump and they can blame Senate Republicans and maybe somehow she can even blame House Republicans, although I don't know how. Um, this is why I think the reality is that a deal isn't going to be struck until after the election. Once that election um, you know, pressure valve is released, then I think there's all kinds of opportunities to get something done. I think people ought to be optimistic about that, but that's not really the kind of message we ought to be sending as lawmakers. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.